Hello, welcome to the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. I am Brother Hosanna David. We have been following a series of eschatological uh, Bible study and we have been talking about the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ. The previous Bible study, we talked about 11 purposes of the rapture and today we want to talk about qualifications for the rapture. Let us pray. O oh God, our King, we ask that you speak to us today, help us to know your will. We ask that as we look into your word, your spirit will speak to us, we cover our lives and our bodies with the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the gathering of your people be unto you, O oh Lord God. Lord, help us to be ready, help us to keep our garments white, help us to do everything that we're supposed to do, even knowing the truth that is capable of setting us free. Lord, help us to escape the evil and the corruption that is in the world right now. Help us as your elect, so that we can be accounted worthy to escape all the terror that will befall this earth after now. Speak to our hearts. Give us a spirit of understanding. As many who are sick, as many who are having one problem or the other, we believe that your word is capable of healing us. For you sent forth your word, and it healed all our diseases. Lord, heal your children in every ramification of their lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So now we want to continue with the Bible study looking at eschatological events. Who will fly in the rapture? The doctrine of once saved, always saved is false. There are qualifications that we must meet. There, are specific, there is a specific lifestyle that we must live if we must fly in the day of rapture. The doctrine of once saved, always saved does not actually come in line with what is in the Bible. What is in the Bible is different from what a lot of people are preaching today. So if I come here and tell you that once you've believed in your heart that you were saved, you will always be saved, I will be deceiving you because that is not the truth. Jesus Christ wants us in different places in the Bible about watching, about missing the rapture, about missing the kingdom of God. In fact, if you look at the Bible as a whole, there are more warnings in the Bible than promises from God. Some people believe solely in the promises and they don't want to pay any attention to the warnings in the Bible. This is wrong. So today we want to look at the qualifications for the rapture. And why are we looking at this qualification? So that we can know the standard of God. The lifestyle that God actually wants us to live. God doesn't want us to live just like every other person in the world. That is why we have the word of God. So what does Jesus Christ actually say? Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 says that Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is a gate, and narrow is a way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. That means even as we see many, many people going astray today and are professing the name of Jesus Christ, not all of them are going to make it into the kingdom. It is only those who are on the narrow path. We have a lot of churches today. They tell you it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. Come as you are and remain as you are. But we have some other churches who preach the truth, who tell you what God wants and what God hates. These are the people who are on the narrow path. Then in Matthew chapter 7, 21 to 22, the Bible says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter, the, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. These are people 
who actually followed Christ. They believed in the name of Christ. Some to the extent that they even used the name of Jesus Christ to cast out demons, but they were never ready. They never allowed Jesus Christ to touch every aspect of their hearts. Probably they have some weaknesses in their lives. They were still living in some secret sins. Even, if, even as God was using them, believing that one day they are going to change. So a miracle worker can miss a rapture. A child of God who speaks in tongues can miss a rapture. Remember the ten virgins. Five were foolish, five were wise. The five foolish virgins, they were still virgins when the Lord returned. They were still virgins. But even though they were still putting on their white garments without any stain, without spot, without wrinkle, they couldn't make it because they were not ready. Maybe one day I'm going to take time to talk about that readiness for the Lord, for the coming of the Lord, and look at that uh, parable of the ten virgins properly. So, what is this trying to tell us? It is telling us that you could still be a Christian and yet still miss the rapture if you do not meet all the qualifications for the rapture. Am I trying to scare somebody here? No, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I am a believer. I have been in Christ since I was 18. But I want to tell you that from all my experience in my work with God, even as a pastor for over 10 years, I want to tell you that it is not by power, it is not by might. All you just need to do is give your life to Jesus Christ, throw all your weaknesses upon Him, and He will see you through. We don't go to heaven by our personal standard of holiness. If we say we want to pursue holiness with our own strength, we will definitely, all of us, we will fail. Nobody is going to succeed. But we have the grace of God. We also have the provision of the blood of Jesus Christ. So that in case we sin, we go to God and we say, forgive me. We purify ourselves in the blood of the Lamb according to 1 John chapter oh, 2, 1, to 2. So, we shouldn't be afraid that, oh, I don't want to stand for God. I don't want to give my life to Christ. After all, the standard is so high, I'm not going to make it. Me, that is telling you, and I, I am not 100% correct in everything I do. I am not a perfect human being. But I believe that by the grace of God, even as I strive towards holiness, towards a perfect man, even as I strive to do all that God wants me to do, even though imperfectly, for now, I believe one day I am going to attain. It is not by my own works of righteousness, but I believe that as I strive to please God, the grace of God that has been helping me is going to continue to help me. And I am going to come to that level whereby through the grace of God, I will be raptured with Him. So I am telling you that I am not a perfect person. I am on the way. And I know if the Lord comes today, I will rapture with him through the grace of the Lord. So if I am telling you that I am not perfect yet, I am saying it because I want to encourage someone so that you don't give up and say, oh, the qualifications are so high. Who can meet this qualification? No, you can. In fact, if I tell you that I accepted the Lord in one of the weakest moments of my life, you may not believe it, but since I accepted the Lord, He has been helping me. I am still standing and I have never, never in any way fallen from this grace. His grace has always been sufficient for me. So let us look at these topics and look at the qualifications for the rapture. So before we begin, let me just run through them. They are 15 in number. Be born again, have the Holy Spirit, saved by the Holy Spirit. Be watchful, faithful unto death. Be in Christ, be Christ. That means belong to Christ. Be holy, be good, be worthy. Be in the church, be pure. Be without spot or wrinkle. Live and walk in the Spirit. Finally, walk in the light. 
Number one, you must be born again. John 3.3, 3, you must be born again. If you are not born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born of the water and of the spirit, and you must be born of the word of God. You must be born by the word of God. Let us read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You must be born again. John 3.3, 3, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of the water, born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We must be born again. Then number two, have the Holy Spirit. You must, as a child of God, have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is a seal, or is, is a seal of God upon our lives. So we must have the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit seals us unto the day of redemption. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. When the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come, the Holy Spirit in us is going to quicken our mortal bodies, both the dead and the living, and we shall be changed within split of seconds, and then we shall take off to meet the Lord in the air. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The Holy Spirit seals us unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4, verse 30. Hence, we will be raptured by the Lord. Let me tell you this. If someone does not have the Holy Spirit, he does not belong to Christ at all. If you are a child of God, if you are born again, even if you don't speak in tongues, I tell you the truth, you have the Holy Spirit in yourself. I did a teaching which I posted on YouTube, Hosanna Devi. Uh, if I don't speak in tongues, does that mean I don't have the Holy Spirit? Uh, I answer the question uh, in details there. Then let's look at number three, sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sees us unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Number four, be watchful. Watchfulness is a key to catching the rapture of light. To be watchful is to be sober, to labor, and occupy to the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wants us in many Bible verses in different places that we should be watchful. If not, we will not enter the kingdom of God. We will be left behind. For instance, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 3, he says, Remember therefore, where remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Then in Revelation chapter 16, verse 15, he says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that washeth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. We are always admonish the Bible to be watchful. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come when nobody expects like a thief in the night. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and have not suffered his house to be broken up. Matthew 24 43 in different places we are warned that we should be watchful a lot of people who are born again who are on fire for the lord could be left behind why it could be a moment of unwatchfulness remember the ten virgins five were foolish five were wise the five foolish virgins they were still virgins they were prepared to meet their husband. 
They were prepared. They were still putting on the white garments when the master came. But it was at a moment of unwatchfulness. They were not actually, uh, uh, they didn't soil them, themselves, they lack oil. The moment they left off the leading of the Holy Spirit, the moment of sleep, the Lord returned. So it's not that you're born again, you've confessed Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior, you are always saved. It is never like that. There are numerous warnings. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, the Bible says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. This is why we must watch. Please be watchful. Number five, faithful unto death. This is something that a lot of people don't want to do. When they meet with danger, they denounce Christ and they move on with their lives. When everything is okay, they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. But Jesus Christ says, if you deny me, I will also deny you in the presence of the holy angels of God. Denying Jesus Christ is in word, indeed, is dangerous, and it could make someone lose their salvation and even missing the rapture. Please, as a child of God, know that faithfulness unto death is very, very important. Let us look at the word of God. In Luke chapter 9, verse 62, Jesus warns against looking back and discontinuing following him. Let me read. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and, looks, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Also, Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witnesses of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. What is this trying to tell us? We should be faithful unto death. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Be faithful unto death. If you love your life you are going to lose it but if you lose your life for the sake of god and for the sake of the kingdom for the sake of the word of god you are going to find it on the last day that's exactly what happened in revelation chapter 20 verse 4. those who were beheaded those who were martyred they all came back to life and they enjoyed the experience of the first resurrection and also reign with christ during the millennial reign, 1,000 years on earth. And number six, be in Christ. As children of God, we are to be in Christ. We are not just to be Christians in our confession, but we must live in Christ. The rapture is for only those who sleep in Jesus. That means those who died in the Lord. Read First Thessalonians 4, verse 14. Those who died in the Lord and those who are alive and abiding in Christ. Read John chapter 15, 1 to 5. Only those who are in Christ belong to Christ. Not all those who say, Lord, 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 Lord. No. Those who abide in Christ, who live by the word of God and are led by the Holy Spirit. These are those that are children of God. And Jesus Christ is going to come for these people. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 and 18. Therefore, if any may be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us 
the ministry of reconciliation. If any man be in Christ, so you have to be in Christ. If you are not in Christ, Jesus Christ is not going to come for you. Then number seven, you have to be Christ. You have to belong to Jesus Christ. You have to be Christ's own property. The rapture is Jesus coming to take his people home, coming to take his church home. So you have to be in Christ and also belong to Jesus Christ. There are some people who are in the church, but they don't belong to Jesus Christ. They are not in the spiritual body of Christ. They are just nominal members of the church, but they don't belong to the universal body of Christ, which is the church. The church of Christ is one, and the church of Christ is a body of Christians all over the world. And that church is a spiritual body of Christ. So there are some who just go to church, but they don't belong. If you are, have not yet baptized, you don't belong to the body of Christ. Yes, if you have not been baptized, you are not yet born again. Uh, I did some teachings on this. You have to be born of the water and of the spirit. You have to be born of the water, of water and the spirit. Except you have done that, you have not been able, you have not, you are not yet admitted into the body of Christ. Baptism is the official ceremony in which you declare yourself dead and you participate in the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You believe that he actually came as a human being. God came as the incarnate word and then became a human being, died, rose again and ascended to heaven. So you participate in this death and as you participate you are I mean after you have repented, not before repentance. You are, as you participate, you are admitted into the body of Christ. Please get this straight. I've done some teachings on baptism. I've done some teachings on uh, this topic extensively. So you have to be of Christ. You have to belong to Jesus Christ himself. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 23 says, But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, Afterward, they that are Christ's at his coming. Then Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and affections and lusts. So we have to make sure we belong to Jesus Christ. Be holy. Number eight, be holy. Without holiness, nobody shall see the Lord. Holiness is a lifestyle of the kingdom. Let me try to be fast so that I can cover the 15 points that we are looking at today. First Peter chapter 1, 15 to 16. But as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all, in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Also read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Number nine, be good. We Christians are Christ's representatives on earth. When Jesus Christ was here, he was going to different places. He was doing good. He was a good man. So you as a child of God, you have to be good. You have to bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You have to bear good fruits so that people will see your work, your good works, and give glory to your Father in heaven. There are some people who say they are Christians, but they quarrel everywhere they go. They make troubles. No. For you to be raptured, you have to be good. John chapter 5, 28 to 29. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, and in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good, those who do good, not Witches, not wizards, not murderers, not adulterers, not those who trample upon the grace of God. Unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. Be worthy. You have to be counted worthy. You have to be accounted worthy. For us to escape the terror of the great tribulation, we must be 
accounted worthy. We, there, are, there is a standard for entering this kingdom. It is not just for any professed Christian. It is for those who are actually on the narrow path, not those who are on the broad path. They dress the way they like, they live their lives the way they like, they are not under the authority and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. No, it is not for them. It is for only those who are on the narrow path. Luke chapter 21 verse 30 says, Wash ye therefore, and pray always, that ye be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Only those who meet the requirements of the rapture will be accounted worthy to partake in this flight. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defied their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. For they are what? For they are worthy. You have to be accounted worthy by the Lord. Then be in the church. You have to belong to the body of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as we see the day approaching. We have to continue to come together and assemble together. There is a, a message God gave me to a sister in Christ who is isolated from the body of Christ. And the Lord said, ask her, when last did you give offering? I don't know the church she attends. When last did you give offering? And I saw her in isolation. God said, even where you are, if you can't go to church in person and gather physically, you attend service. If you can meet up with the online service, watch the replay and participate, don't live in isolation. After the lockdown, some people refuse to return back to the church, but we can't stay in isolation. It is very, very important. In fact, she asked me, can I give my offering once in a month? And I told her, no. What God says is he wants a regular record of your church attendance, either online or offline, in person. And he wants you to give every week. It is a fellowship. It is not about membership. It is a fellowship. And if you attend church online, that one even is not enough. If you have your family gather together, read the word of God, study the word of God, give offering, you can take the offering and give it to the poor. You can see someone pushing on the street and give the money to them. If you are affiliated to any church, either denomination, denominational church or non-denominational, you can send it. You have to participate in the gathering of the saints. When you are gathered together, it is not just you alone. The Holy Spirit is there. The angels of the Lord are, are there. And also, you are participating in the universal body of Christ. Universal body of Christians. Yes. It is very, very important. Then also, Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 says, Who now rejoicing in my suffering for you and filled up with which is beyond the affliction of Christ in my body for the sake of the church. The church is the body of Christ. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. First, first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 27. The church is one. The church is universal. The church is everywhere. You find Christians gathering in the name of the Lord. That is the church. So we must belong to this church. And the church is a kingdom of God on earth. You don't enter the kingdom of God the day you die and you resurrect. No. It is not after the judgment of God that you enter the kingdom of God. That is not when you belong to the kingdom. You are admitted into the kingdom of God, which is the church of God, the day you repent and you get baptized. Baptism is the official ceremony in which 
new members are admitted into the body of Christ, which is the church. So don't think that when you, uh, it is when you die, you become a member of the kingdom. No. Both the dead in Christ and the living in Christ, they are all members of the kingdom. So don't exclude yourself from the membership of the church. It is very, very important. And I also want to warn, it is not everywhere people gather together in the name of Christ that actually belong to Christ. There are some gatherings of people who are gathered for Satan, the synagogue of Satan. So use your discretion, use the leading of the Holy Spirit, use the spirit of discernment to know which organization or gathering you should belong. Then be pure. You have to be pure. God is a God of purity. God is not a God of impurity. We are not called into rioting in sin and impurity. First John chapter 3, 2 and 3 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and every man that had this hope, if you have this hope of the resurrection, every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. We must purify ourselves. All Christians must continually wash their robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. Read Revelation chapter 7. Verse 14. Purity is very, very important. Except you wash your robes in the blood of the Lamb, continue to purify your heart with the word of God, with discipline, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, you could be left behind when the Lord comes. So we have to be pure at every point in time. If you put on white, uh, for those of you who know me, I like putting on white a lot of times. And each time I put on white, I am very, very conscious of stains. I like children. Sometimes children run to me to hug me, and I play with children. But each time I put on white, I am very, very, extremely careful so that I don't get myself stained, especially when I'm away from home. So, with your garment of righteousness, you must make sure it is pure without spots and wrinkle, and that is what we want to talk about now. Number 13, be without spot or wrinkle. Jesus Christ is not coming for a church that is dead in sin, church that is dirty, no. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 says, that he might present it, that means present the church to himself, a, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. One of the reasons, the purpose of Jesus Christ coming to the rapture is to take the church home and present the church to himself. First Peter chapter 1 verse 19 says, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. Yes, we have to make sure that we, who are the body of Christ, we make sure that our body, our garments are white and cleansed as individuals and as a church. This is very important. It is so much unfortunate that we're supposed to be talking about these things from time to time, remind ourselves and examine our lives every time. But unfortunately, what we hear most times is miracle or the good things of life but this don't supposed to be so. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon, and we need to get ready. That is why we are doing this teaching, so that everybody can look into their lives prayerfully and ask the Lord to equip them so that they can live a worthy lifestyle. Praise the Lord. Number 14, live and walk in the Spirit. We we'll live in the Spirit and we we'll walk in the Spirit. Though we live in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. We must submit ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
all Christians who have the hope of partaking in the rapture must live and be led by the Holy Spirit, without which it is impossible to live in Christ. Romans 8 verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Also Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Are you living in the Spirit? Are you being led by the Spirit? The five foolish virgins, at a time, they became loose and they did not allow the Holy Spirit to lead them thoroughly. So they veered off. And that time, the Lord came. We must walk and live by the Holy Spirit. Let's live and walk in the Holy Spirit. Number 15, walk in the light. We are children of light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. We are the light of the world. So we must walk as children of light. We must live the life of light. And in the light, Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 says, As ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. We must walk in the light. If we must be accounted worthy to partake in the rapture. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, and we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sins. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light so that you don't stumble when the Lord is going to come. If we walk in the light, we will see clearly. We will see very clearly and watch in case every kind of fall, every kind of backsliding. I am not giving this admonition because I want to add my own to the word of God or threaten us or frighten us by the standard of holiness. But I am telling you this, that this is a requirement. But I also want to let you know that nobody, no single human being, can meet all these requirements with their own strength. Remember what the Bible says, For by strength shall no man prevail. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 9. Nobody is going to prevail by strength. But we should submit the totality of our lives to Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us. Look at what Romans 9 verse 16 says. So then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. This is God's standard, but I don't want you to be scared. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm only telling you that this is the standard. Follow this standard. And as you make up your mind of, to follow this standard, the Holy Spirit is going to give you the grace to overcome. Let me tell you something. Some of you think that Following God, you have to have all the power, all the self-control you need before you can follow Christ. Let me show you an example. I have experienced moments in my life whereby I was falling from the sky, falling, I mean, free fall. It's not once, not twice. Falling, backsliding, and then... It's like, God, hold me by my hair like this. Just something like this. And pulled me up. You know when you are without strength? When you know that nothing will stop you from falling? When you are without strength? Because of a watchfulness. And the Lord holds you like this. And pulls you, pulls you like this. That if I don't... Pick this my son. If I don't pick this my daughter. He or she is going to fall. And no pieces is going to remain. The Lord has held me like this. And put me on a safe ground. After experiencing things like that. I know. Personally. I know that there is nothing to boast of. 
When I newly came into Christ, when I see people do some things, I bash them. Oh, why must you do this? Oh, why must you do this? Oh, my, why must you do this? But after coming into Christ and stayed for some years, I discovered that it's not by strength. I am not talking about those who live in sin, like uh, uh, one so-called bishop who was uh, sleeping with a 16-year-old girl and was denying it. I'm not talking about things like that. Those people are never Christians. I'm talking about someone falling into adultery by mistake and telling the church, oh, I fell. I, I, I never knew how it happened. I'm talking about things like that. I'm talking about people falling into real temptation. And then they are sorry that, oh, look at what I've done. I used to say, why would Peter even deny Jesus Christ after seeing all these miracles? Why will Elijah even run? I'm talking about things like that. It is by God's own grace. By strength, no man prevails. The Lord is going to give us a grace so that we can be accounted worthy. So, so I'm not trying to scare you. I am standing by grace. And I want to encourage you that the grace of God that is keeping me is more than able to keep you at soul. It is not by strength. And I'm not following God because of my own strength. I just follow when he says sit, I sit. When he says stand, I stand. You too can, but submit to the Lord. Don't be scared by this standard. That is what I'm trying to tell you. I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to help you to understand this. Finally, let us look at the summary. Number one, be born again, have the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit, be watchful, be faithful unto death, be in Christ, be Christ, belong to Christ, be holy, be good, be worthy, be in the church, be pure, be without spot or wrinkle, live and walk in the spirit, walk in the light. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ or you have areas you're struggling, submit to the Lord and he will see you through. Let us pray. Father Lord, we want to say a very big thank you for this Bible study today. We ask that his spirit will help us. To live according to this standard. We don't want to follow our human standard. We know it is not easy. But your spirit can see us through. Your grace can see us through. Lord, we are counting on you. And as many who are facing one challenge or the other, receive grace to overcome. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may it be well with you. You are healed of every infirmity of the body and of the soul. It is well with you. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. And Lord God, I pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry, that you will bless them and open the windows of heaven upon their lives. May it be well with you. Thank you, Lord, because we know you will help us to meet the standard that you have earmarked for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please share this video with someone. You can use this Bible study in your home. And if there is anything you want me to actually talk about that I've not talked about, or there is something you do not understand, you can write me. My contact details are in the description, but you can visit our website, which is on the screen, the Narrow West Christ All Nations, or even on social media, and contact us, reach us, and we are very much ready to serve you and respond to your messages. If you have not given your life to Christ, please do well to do so. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.